So after all, we have to go to the electromagnetic wave. But now we are starting with mechanical wave. So at first we will see how the equation of the mechanical wave is formed. After that we will come to the wave optics. So I want to give you just a preliminary knowledge of the wave, what wave is or how can we formulate the equation of a wave. So this is preliminary requirement. Now suppose I have a wave of like this. So suppose this is the axis. So when we uh, talk about wave, <coughs> we should always think about in which direction the wave is moving. That means either in positive x direction or in negative x direction, mainly these two directions are taken. So suppose it is a wave of like this. So I have left just over here. So I have drawn a sign from this here. Okay, so just imagine that every particle or electric field or whatever is dancing about this mean position. So this mean position is actually the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So, so every particle or it may be the electric field or it may be the magnetic field whatever but it is dancing about this mean position. So at any instant of time, suppose I have found that electric field component or say any particle is here. So if it is like this, so first of all suppose this displacement from the origin, so this displacement is x and to go up to this, it has taken a time ts. So this x is the displacement up to this and to go up to this distance, it has taken a time t s. And the total time taken to reach the particle over here, that means the particle actually oscillating. So this particle, so to move the wave up to this, so we can say how far the wave has moved this much now, x. But at present, where is the particle or where is the electric field? So the electric field is not at this mean position, electric field is above the mean position or it may be at the mean position or below the mean position. So let us take this time, that means from starting from here to here. So this total time taken is T. So this much time, that means the particle actually starts oscillating. So total time when the particle up to here is t dash. Now after that also some a little time is required to raise the particle or the electric field from the mean position or to go below the mean position. If it is at the mean position then it is t dash. Okay, no problem. But if it is a little more than the mean position then the time will be little more. So this time is actually t. Okay. So as this is the case of SHM, basically all those particles or electric field or whatever is actually executing SHM about their mean position. So we can say that this is its amplitude. So this is the amplitude means this is maximum oscillation. So let us write this A. So magnitude of this is also A. Now we know that in SHM, if this is suppose the displacement, this displacement up to this, so from this to this. So this is taken as y. So this y can be written as y equal to a sine sine of cos, but we have taken the curve of sine. So you can write a sine omega and t. Now what is the t here? So see up to this to reach the particle up to this point, up to this point, the time taken is t dash. But from here to here, it has taken some time. So that time is the total time taken to reach the particle here minus the time taken by the wave to reach up to this distance. So that is, so this much time is actually, so if we say what is the time taken for this much of shifting. 
so this time taken is basically this total time t minus t dash so this is the time taken to reach the particle from here to here so this is the time t minus t dash so in case of shm we take the time of just what is the time taken from the mean position so here it will be a sin omega and in case of t in the place of t we can write t minus t dash so this is actually the time taken to reach the particle here or the electric field here so now a sin now omega is equal to you know that this is omega is equal to 2 pi f 2 pi into frequency and some two thing uh, two or three things that you should know and uh, you must be knowing that the velocity velocity of any wave is given by f into lambda so how it comes because suppose if there is one oscillation one complete oscillation then it moves through a length this much so that is your lambda lambda means one wave length so if there is 100 oscillation then it will move 100 lambda if there is 1000 oscillation per second then it will move 1000 lambda so if there is f oscillation per second then it will move f into lambda meter per second so this is the velocity in meter per second where lambda is also in meter so in one for one oscillation if a particle oscillate say 10 times that means 10 times lambda is the velocity so if it oscillates f times then f times lambda is the velocity so f lambda that is the velocity so we can write here that this and this is the time t so what is t this t okay so it will be t and what is the t dash t dash is the time taken to reach up to this displacement okay so what is the time taken to reach up to this distance if the wave is propagating with a velocity v if the wave is actually traveling towards plus x direction with a velocity v then the time taken to reach this displacement is x by v so this t dash will be x by v okay so this much displacement and the velocity of the wave that is i am not telling you about the velocity of this oscillation this is the velocity of the wave so this velocity is v so that's why it is x by d now v is equal to f lambda so we are putting here f lambda so it will get so this is 2 pi f and this will be t minus x by this is f lambda now if i insert this 2 pi f inside then we will get a sine and this will be 2 pi f t minus so here you can see 2 pi f so this f f will be cancelled so it will be 2 pi by lambda into x now 2 pi f 2 pi f is actually omega so let us write this a sine omega t minus k x so this k so some thing that you have to remember that omega is equal to 2 pi f where f is the frequency and the velocity of the wave is equal to f lambda and k is actually wave vector so this is actually 2 pi by lambda in our case so 2 pi over lambda so these are some of the case now this is the equation of a wave which is moving towards plus x direction so you can see this is our plus x direction so if it is in minus x direction just change this x with minus x so this is the equation of the wave moving plus x direction so this wave is moving in plus x direction so if there is some wave which is moving in minus x direction then its equation will be a psi and it will be omega t and minus of k and of minus x so you have to put minus x over here because it is in minus x direction so it will give a sine omega t 
plus kx. So this is the equation of the wave which is moving in plus x direction and this is the equation which is moving in minus x direction. Now the wave that we are considering that may be a sine wave or a cosine wave but for calculation generally we see that when we work with uh, you can work with sine or cosine but when we work with cosine a little bit facility is obtained. What sort of facility that is just this much. So suppose I am writing equation in this format y is equal to a sin I want to write now kx at the front so you get minus kx plus omega so if I take minus sin outside then it will be minus a sin and it will, this will be kx minus omega t so I, if I want to write k at the front because k sometimes it was it is required that we write kx at the front so there will be a minus sign outside but if I write in the form of cos then the facility will be y is equal to a cos if I, I am taking say cos so cos and you take common minus so this will be kx minus omega t and we know that cos of minus theta is cos theta so this will give a cos kx minus omega t so if I want to keep the k at front so then cos is the better practice so this is the equation of the wave which is moving actually in positive x direction so this is actually the equation of the wave that is moving in so actual equation is y equal to a sin and this is omega t minus kx where omega is or k is equal to 2 pi by lambda omega is equal to 2 pi f so this is the actual equation so if i bring k for at the forward of the reaction at the starting of the reaction then you have to take a minus sign common so if you take the minus sign outside then it will be a minus outside so this will not look good but if it, you take cos cosine then the facility is this no sign is outside and if it moves also in minus x direction say it is moving in minus x direction so then it will be a cos so it will be positive so no problem at all so that's why generally we follow the cosine equation okay so just a little recapitulation about the format of wave in em wave or light is also an em wave so for this we have to change just certain parameters of this wave that is this so suppose this is the wave so let us take the cosine format so at any instant suppose this is the electric field component so we generally represent it in the form of electric field component so if this is E and its maximum that is this amplitude so this amplitude is say E0 so E0 is the electrical field so this is the amplitude here so here just in place of Y you can write E is equal to it will be just E is equal to so your A will be replaced by so our equation was Y equal to A so this was our equation now this A will be replaced by E naught so this is the amplitude and this will be cosine and here it will be also Kx minus omega t so this will be the equation of an electromagnetic wave so light is an electromagnetic wave and we generally represent electromagnetic wave in the form of its electric field so this is the equation of the wave now what can be more that can be done that is k is equal to 2 pi by lambda so this will not be changing this will remain same so omega is equal to 2 pi f so yes that is also 2 pi f and also the velocity but here the velocity is c and this c is equal to f times lambda so this much meter per second and you know the value of this this is in radial per second and this is 2 pi by lambda okay so these are some basic things that you should know before we start the topic of superposition of waves